Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Now to my opening statement. It wasn't about convenience, and this is not old news. She set up the personal server to prevent us from learning her private business. And it is only because of a government watchdog group and an ethical federal judge that we found out why this week. Why? Because Bill and Hillary Clinton are the Bonnie and Clyde of American politics. Now follow me on this one. Why would a woman, a lawyer no less, one experienced many times over in the ways of Washington, risk placing classified information, our live assets, the placement of satellites, drones, and our most secret plans on an unprotected, non-government, non-capturable server? Why would she violate federal regulations upon which she was schooled just before she became Secretary of State, not to mention violate federal criminal laws that would put her in jail? She's too smart to do that. Why would she take the time to make the effort to hide, destroy, and delete 33,000 emails? Now we know. She did it for the most selfish of reasons, the oldest of motives. She did it for greed and for power and for the almighty dollar. She did it to hide her shady Clinton Foundation dealings. She did it in order to do favors for Clinton donors and to put a price tag on our State Department. The same duo who came up with a scheme to rent out the Lincoln bedroom is back in business with a new and bigger scheme, one that is more far-reaching and worldwide, one that violates not only the law, but all codes of moral and ethical conduct in government. A couple willing to sell anything to the highest bidder for money and power. This is why the emails were hidden from the beginning. And this is why they were ultimately destroyed and deleted. This week we find out top State Department aide Cheryl Mills, formerly of the President Bill Clinton impeachment team, aligned with Hillary ever since, and also on that private server, was advised in 2012 that a Freedom of Information request was made for the number of email accounts used by Hillary Clinton. Now, dozens of senior officials throughout the State Department, including Clinton's immediate staff, obviously concerned, exchanged emails with the Secretary and Cheryl Mills. They actually used the personal account to discuss the official business and advise her of this FOIL request. Their response to the request? There were no records. They were in active defense mode to hide their scheme. And when truth is put to the lie that in fact there was an email account, they say they made a mistake. Had they been honest, that personal server would have been exposed years earlier. And also this week we find out a clear pay-to-play relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton State Department. An urgent email from Doug Band, formerly assistant to President Bill Clinton, now overseeing the Clinton Foundation, to Cheryl Mills and Uma Abedin, those two jewels on that private server, request that a huge Clinton Foundation donor meet a high State Department contact in Lebanon. The individual paid the price of admission, folks. Gilbert Chigori gave between one and five million dollars to the Clinton Foundation and pledged a billion dollars to the Clinton Global Initiative. So, of course, arrangements are made for him to meet with Jeff Feldman, the former U.S. ambassador to Lebanon, the country where Chigori was doing business. Abedin ironically, paid both by the foundation and the State Department, immediately responds with, I'll talk to Jeff, ignoring the agreement between Hillary and President Obama to create a wall between that Clinton Foundation and the State Department, confident that it would never be found out. 
And when we learn there was a private server, what happens? You do what anyone looking to hide the evidence does. You erase, you conceal, you hide, you destroy. Now, I've told you this before. The Clinton Foundation is nothing more than a money laundering operation parading as a charitable foundation, where estimates are that only 15% of its money goes to charities, the rest to expenses, a veritable slush fund for Clinton operatives and ex-employees, a convenient way to get money from foreign countries and donors not allowed to contribute to presidential campaigns, but willing to dump hundreds of millions of dollars into a foundation of a powerful Secretary of State and possible future president. Why and for what? For access, for information, for power. Folks, politicians on a much lower level, of course, have gone to jail for much less. And we find out this week that when the FBI, three separate offices, approached the Department of Justice to commence an investigation into this so-called not-for-profit 501c3, the Department of Justice refuses to do so. You know, and Fifth Amendment pleading Lois Lerner, when she opens files on small conservative organizations, she gets away with it, too. A few years' vacations, a bonus, and a pension. So it's no surprise that the DOJ refuses to investigate the Clinton Foundation. No surprise at all. The collusion between Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton was on display for all to see in an astounding meeting on a tarmac in Phoenix while an investigation of Bill Clinton's wife was being conducted by Loretta Lynch. And consider this one. Isn't it curious how Miss Lynch is willing to listen to the FBI when they recommend not going forward with charges against Hillary Clinton? But when the FBI recommends going forward with a criminal probe on a blatant pay-to-play bribery investigation of the Bill Hillary and Chelsea Clinton Foundation, their answer is a resounding no. And you know what, folks? The Clintons, they're not even grateful. They are classless. Take a listen. The FBI director said when he testified before Congress, he had to amend his previous day statement that she had never received any emails marked classified. They saw two little notes with a C on it. This is the biggest load of bull I ever heard. You know, the FBI's ability to lose decades of hard-earned and well-respected credibility is now on display for the country to see. You know, Jim Comey is the FBI director, and I told you, Jim, last week what happens when you run with these kinds of people. Jim, you're running with dogs, and you know better than I that when you lie with dogs, expect to get fleas. Jim, listen to that comment from Bill Clinton. Jim, my friend, you deserved it. And that's my opening statement. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine.